motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Greetings and peace, family. Queen here with another episode of thequeendome.com. We are continuing with quantum manifestation. This is part number four. Before we dive in, let's take a moment, a couple of breaths together to get into the present moment awareness. Ah, breathing in that good prana, that good life force, chi, sekhmet energy. Always feels good. So happy Friday to you. You know, um, I went to the store this morning, and um, it's interesting how when you're really in tune with the Earth's atmosphere, and uh, the vibration of, of the people. I find it um, interesting that on Fridays, the energy of the earth is so, is so elevated, it's so amped up. And I'm wondering if that is because most people only live for the weekend. I'm wondering if that's the case. If that is the case, I love the high energy, but at the same time, I'm saddened by the fact that the collective potentially only lives for two days out of the week. Two days out of the week. It would be um, really awesome if this this energy that I feel like on Fridays if that energy could be every day for me it is every day like like I live for every day <laughs> why not why not or what was the point in you incarnating if you're not gonna live for every day so anyways I know that by changing myself and changing my personal individual vibration that I also change the vibration of the whole so uh, maybe we can all do that maybe we can all you know with focused intention practice on raising our vibration on a daily basis not just when the weekend is coming about or when something you know a holiday or a vacation or something special but just you know realizing that each day every single day is special every single day is miraculous I mean if you're here to witness it and take part in it you might as well have the most fun the most joy I mean why not like what else are you wasting your time doing <laughs> anyway that was a, a one, of, one of my random thoughts so let's uh, continue with quantum manifestation part number three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is part number four. So um, again, we are reading and then the final part will be tomorrow. So uh, we're reading from the Energetic Institute out of Australia. And uh, so let's dig in. Empowering our energetic container of self. We often describe the human condition 
in terms of having four bodies. The first is a physical body, and the other three bodies are energetic in nature, they being the emotional, mental, and spiritual body. In essence, we say that whatever attributes the last three bodies hold and whatever processes they enact have its roots in the energetic reality of our self. For this reason, we believe that attending to the health of all the four bodies is a part of being healthy. Please refer to my article, Embody Spirituality, Compassion, and Care of Oneself, for more information in this general area of empowering and creating energetic change, health, and flow in the body. In terms of influencing the manifestation of our reality, it involves increasing the volume of power our personal body-mind transmitter, which is the bioelectric energy field that runs through as well as surrounding the body. In human beings, there is a relationship between the breath and our energy field. A key linked concept is that the deeper breathing, the more powerful our energy field. Western society has a universal complaint of its people breathing in a very shallow fashion. The shallow nature of breathing is a known outcome of a person having lived in the sympathetic mode of fight and flight mode of their auto autonomic nervous system for sustained periods of time. This is the bodily level difference which cuts off the fuel to the bioelectric energy system of the body-mind as a side effect of its cutting off of the consciousness appreciation of feelings flowing through the body. It is a means to an end for it results in suppression of feeling and awareness in the body and the reason we do this is that all is so often that we have feelings and experiences in and with our bodies in childhood that created suffering and painful emotional states in an attempt to fend off the repeated experience of such suffering and painful emotions our body mind intuition knew to cut off the breath so we cease to feel and be aware of such states of being our bioelectric energy also retreated upward into the head where the primitive autonomic nervous system kept us in sympathetic mode, hypervigilance as an allied defense to ward off such threats. So we now all typically have compromised, blocked, and stuck bioelectric energy systems which cannot transmit with the power of clarity to help us naturally step into our creator archetypes. Defended people normally live in their heads in fear, and the mental recurrent thinking that creates analysis paralysis in an attempt to control and think the right way forward in life. Many will adopt the victim, controller, perfectionist, or the abuser archetypes as a consequence of the fear they believe dictates their reality. The creator is suppressed by all of these stances we typically adopt, and the required ability to be able to step back observe and let go cannot occur from a person stuck in a fear-based, hypervigilant, hardwired ANS and body-mind container. The way forward for many here is to embrace either bioenergetics exercises, qigong, chiropractic treatments which utilize the breath such as network spinal analysis, or key yoga systems which emphasize the breath. Deep tissue massage may be needed to unlock chronic spastic or contracted muscles which result from shallow breathing over a long period of time. Uh, this is very interesting that um, they incorporated this into uh, this article because breath work, um, the Sanskrit word, um, pranayama, prana means energy, yama means control. Breath work is nothing more than energy control. Now, um, when you see a newborn baby, you'll see that a newborn baby automatically knows how to breathe properly. They breathe from their diaphragm, abdomen area. You'll see their, their abdomen and their uh, um, stomach get very, very large as they inhale. And as they exhale, then it, it, it goes flat. That is uh, deep breathing. That is proper breathing. And that type of breathing allows you to pull in the nutrients, the prana, the uh, various nourishment from the atmosphere 
into your bioelectric body and your bioelectric field. Um, I do have a um, playlist on my YouTube channel that goes over some various um, breathing techniques that I utilize with my yoga practice. So you can look on the YouTube channel and um, follow some of those if you're interested in increasing your breathing, increasing your prana, increasing your nourishment, so forth and so on. To get to the YouTube channel, if you just go to thequeendome.com, thequeendome.com, and uh, look for the YouTube picture, click on it, and it'll subscribe you to the channel. If you go to YouTube and you just type in uh, Queen Maat, just Queen, and then the next word is M-A-A-T, you should be able to uh, pull the channel up as well. All right. So uh, that's very important. You know, your breath work um, is really the foundation. And let me let me also say this. Breath work, energy control, yoga, qigong, tai chi. All of these different words mean the same thing at the end of the day. It means to control your breathing. Um, allow allow yourself to to um, not breathe uh, so pantedly like an animal, you know, from the chest upward, but all the way from the from the diaphragm, the abdomen area, all the way in and out. Okay, but again, I have some techniques on my YouTube channel, so like I said, go there and you can check out some of those techniques, and I'm always adding new techniques so I'm always adding new videos to that playlist okay all right next part here relaxing the body mind component the second key to being able to influence our manifesting reality is to be in a relaxed parasympathetic nervous system state of the ANS in Buddhism we often attribute this state of being in a supple state of body and mind which settles the mind and allows for stable meditation or visualization and concentration. The key related disciplines here are meditation, yoga, mindfulness, and deep tissue massage or other supporting modalities of nurturance and resolution of stress states. This is a prerequisite before we conduct the third step which is to clean up the body-mind circuitry and also the body-mind internal database content so that we transmit and vibrate our positive intention with clarity and power. This requires a body-mind system that is healthy and undefended, operating from the limbic and frontal brain nodes wired to the ANS and its relaxed parasympathetic nervous system. For more detailed information on meditation, yoga, and mindfulness, I refer you to the article on the website entitled Meditation and Mindfulness Strategies. In terms of massage, I recommend each person find a qualified massage practitioner who can sympathetically understand your bodily defenses at the postural and muscular level and work with you to correct these and release these over time. <clears throat> All right, so this is leading us up to, um, you know, the four qualities that we talked about or the four attributes that we talked about in yesterday's episode as far as getting you into a clear um, landscape where you can truly tap into uh, the quantum and uh, do your manifestation work. So within, within this particular section here, it's talking about relaxing the body-mind component. You know, um, a lot of times we get caught up in our day-to-day -day as far as um, our work, our children, um, our parents, our chores, our activities, our recreation, things that we have to do that we forget that this supercomputer that we're walking around with, i.e. our bodies, needs relaxation. It needs to be at rest. For me, my relaxation comes through my yoga and comes through my meditation. Now, you don't even have to have necessarily a practice like that. I recommend it because it has so many other additional benefits for you. But just relaxing alone will allow you to take in more energy, more nourishment, and, and, and raise your vibration just by relaxing, just putting the body in a relaxing state. 
Um, so take time for yourself. Take time to relax your mind. Take time to relax your body because this is only going to allow you, number one, to think with more clarity, to have more health, and to have more longevity. So being in this fight or flight, this stress mode all the time, some people say, I, I get off on stress. Like, I love stress. I love to be under the gun. Yeah, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that's not good for anybody. It's not good for anybody, okay? So love on yourself. And, and give yourself, you know, self-love, self-care, and self-relaxation, okay? All right, the next part here. All right, clean up distortions in the reality loop, okay? The third key is to clean up the body-mind circuitry and also the body-mind internal database content so that we transmit and vibrate our positive intention with clarity and with power. We must get to work raising consciousness of ourselves so that we start to intervene and take inventory of what the body-mind internal database is putting into our reality loop. We need to have conscious intervention into this loop so that we can start to see our distorted belief systems and then pull back the projections we have onto all objects external to ourselves. This means we cut the projected material out of the reality loop and we start to see objects from a less distorted place and in turn do not experience the negative emotional states that often accompany this. We start to own our reality and see how we set it all up as a self-perpetuating illusion. We start to break this cycle of victimhood that entraps many in life. The previous mentioned practices of meditation and mindfulness are critical aspects of gaining this self-awareness and intervention into the reality loop process. This has traditionally been the Eastern view of correcting our psychology as it were and is a slow but proven system that brings many benefits to its adherent. In the Western view, psychology has been the traditional attempt in recent times to clean up our mental and emotional distortions using traditional mentally based observation and behavioral intervention techniques. Various therapies and approaches, including body-mind focused solutions, have evolved over time. The deep emotional work that body psychotherapy embraces to uncover and express the lower self. Emotions has the effect of releasing deep and transformative energy into the energy system, as well as rewriting the body-mind internal database. This rewiring process must occur with the body-mind in a fully charged energetic state with consciousness in present time rather than caught up in the old loop reality. This will purge the body-mind of negative material and take it out of the old reality loop explained earlier. The person starts to heal and their reality changes to the positive accordingly to the amount of the negative body-mind wire material they are prepared to confront and release. This, together with an increasingly powerful energetic transmitter, will propel a person towards a new positive reality, release old negative patterns from their current reality, and allow them to step into their creator archetype over time. Deep therapy, therefore, involves firstly the recovery from the distorted and wounded loop reality we have set up for ourselves, and then a second stage of repattering or stepping into our creator archetype. The great myths and stories from all ages and societies tell of the hero who must set out on a great challenge which has the threat of death and in prevailing he finds a treasure of precious objects perhaps once lost which bestows the wisdom and power to become the creator or true hero. This is the process of deep therapy which faces that dark and disowned lower and shadow self so we can emerge into our higher self, creator, hero, archetype. We must face our darker, bestial natures that in myth is represented by Pan and Hermes and integrate them into our collective personality and self. We face rather than continue to disown our shadow or lower self. If one tries to skip the confrontation of our shadow natures, first step and go straight to the second step of trying to be the creator, as is the fashion with many new age therapies, one is doomed to fail. 
Refer to my article, The Concept of Soul in Therapy and in Life, for more information on the failure of many therapies to confront or to heal the shadow self in mankind. If one tries to bypass our essential shadow self, one needs to use a forcing current to sustain any new change via the conscious will. But typically this often means the ego also easily deludes themselves by adopting a new defense that they are healed and now some form of a creator. If you mix the power of the creator archetype with an unhealed shadow self body mind, you're creating the archetype of the sorcerer or magical abuser. Many people fear facing their lower or shadow self for the pain of going into the original wounds, but it cannot be avoided to heal the defenses and the distortions that we have built up over time and to release the energies that's locked up in them. Wow, that's powerful. I have to take a drink of water on that. Wow. So what this is telling us is that to get to, uh, you know, a new thought process, a new um, rewiring in the brain of, of how we think of ourselves and how we think of various experiences, it's a process, right? And this is taking us step by step through that process to do the rewiring in a proper way that will be number one, sustaining, and then number two, not from an ego standpoint, but more so uh, from a spiritual or energetic standpoint. If you remember, it talked about the four different bodies, right? So we have the physical body, the emotional, the energetic, the spiritual, which is all one. However, we have, um, you know, different uh, emotions and experiences that align up with uh, different facets of these four bodies. So if you're taking, taking this information to heart, what this is really showing you is step by step by step how to clean out your junk, right? Look at, look at, look at ourselves, and I love how this article is talking, um, our bioelectric system, right? We, we are, again, <laughs> supercomputers. So in order for you, say, say you're going to, um, you got a, you got an old computer, right? And say you, you want to sell that old computer to somebody, right? Well, the first thing that you've got to do is, um, you've got to get all the viruses, um, off of that computer, right? So you got to clean that hard drive up of all the viruses on the, on the computer, right? Then, you want to uh, clear up space, right? Because the person that's going to get the computer from you, they're going to want to add on their own applications and stuff like that, right? So you want to then defrag the computer. So defragging the, the computer is going to um, clean up um, space, hard drive space and memory space for the computer, right? Now, you have to do these steps first before you can install new software. So the same way that we would wipe a computer, clean up a computer, defrag a computer, is the same way that we change ourselves, right? So, you know, my great-grandmother used to say, you can't put perfume on a pile of shit. If you put perfume on a pile of shit, it's going to smell like a pile of shit with perfume on it. <laughs> so you have to take the time to wash all of the crap away. Wash all of the negative emotions, the uh, stereotypical concepts that you have about people, about experiences, you know, there may be one incident that happened to you in your life and now you plague every experience around that thing the exact same way. So you don't get to experience life in abundance. You experience life in fear, you know, and that's, that's no way to live. 
So take these concepts and take these steps to heart. And tomorrow we're going to um, have the grand finale, part five of this, which is going to bring everything together in this whole quantum manifestation process. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed delivering it. Um, when I have these talks with you all, I learn so much. Probably one of the main reasons I do this. <laughs> um, so anyways, we'll talk tomorrow. Um, if you've enjoyed the show, you know, subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, leave me a comment, uh, leave me a rating, and we will talk on tomorrow for part number five. Peace and unconditional love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's N-O-B-S-C-L-O-S-E-R.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.